Hey, I'm Billy Drain from Miller Industries. Today we're joined by Cummins Engine Company to talk a little bit about the Class 8 chassis and the air handling systems and the preventative maintenance things that you can do to keep those vehicles running on the road. We have with us today Jason Lambert and Scott Furr. Thank you, Billy. One of the most important things you can do is to properly maintain the intake air system of your vehicle. Failing to properly maintain that system can be one of the most expensive mistakes you can make. It can cause unnecessary dirt ingestion into the engine, resulting in premature wear and premature failure. Now we're going to take a look at the process to properly change the air filter on several Class 8 chassis. So the first chassis we're going to look at today is the Peterbilt 389 with the X15 Cummins engine. On this particular setup, we have outside air filter mounted housings. Always reference your maintenance manual to know when to accurately change out your air filter assembly. And always check your air restrictor gauge to know when you need to change your air filter. When you get done changing your air filter, you will simply reset your air restrictor gauge by pressing on the top of it. The secondary air restrictor gauge is in the cab of the chassis. Not all cabs or models will have both outside restrictor gauge and cab chassis depending on the OEM. So on this style with the outside canister you want to make sure that you move the mirror out of the way if you need to. On this one we will not have to. You'll need to remove the acorn nuts with a 9 16 and a half inch wrench. There will be four of the acorn nuts that will need to be removed and be careful not to hit your truck as you're removing these nuts. And the bottom end of these bolts will stay on the air filter housing. Be careful of grease that may be on your acorn nuts. Once I remove the acorn nuts, I'm going to take off the top of the air filter housing. Simply remove it and set it in a safe place. After doing so, I will safely step up to the truck and remove the air filter element. Now, you may need to shake the air filter element to get it out and then discard your air filter element. Using a damp, wet paper towel, wring out any excess of water, wipe out any debris that may have come off the old filter, clean out any dust or dirt debris within the filter housing. Make sure before you install your new air filter that you check your air filter housing gasket to make sure there's no rips or tears and to make sure it's still serviceable. After inspecting your gasket, inspect your filter. Make sure there's no rips or tears or significant damage onto your new filter before installing. Simply drop it back down into the housing and put it in place. And when done, you'll just need to reinstall the top cover of your air filter housing. Be careful not to bump your truck. Very simple process. And when you're putting this together, Make sure that you tighten your acorn nuts to whatever is specified in your OEM manual. Don't forget on this particular model, we have filter elements on both sides of the truck. That concludes our air filter changing on this Peterbilt 389 chassis. Next, we will be looking at two different chassis, both having an X15 performance engine, also both having the same style air filter housing assembly. Our first chassis we'll be looking at is the Peterbilt 567. Our second chassis we'll be looking at is the Kenworth T880. So demonstrated here on the Peterbilt, the air filter housing is above the engine block. You will need to get a ladder to safely get to the air filter housing to be able to change the air filter element. We'll be demonstrating this on the Kenworth as they have the same style air filter housing assembly. When changing out your air filter, always make sure that you reference your OEM manual and always look at your air restrictor indicator to make sure that your air filter needs to be changed. So here we are on the Kenworth T880 
and we'll be disassembling the air filter assembly and taking out the air filter and then putting it back in. There will be four bolts. If you'll notice, there'll be two on the bottom and there will be two at the top. You'll need a socket wrench with a long extension and a 10 millimeter socket. We'll undo the bottom two first. Then we'll do the top two. Once you get your bolts out, remove the front cover of the air assembly, and then you can remove your air filter element. So after removing your air filter element, remember to use a damp cloth to get out any debris that may have fell from the old filter. Wipe it out thoroughly. Inspect your new air filter. Make sure there's no cuts, debris, rips, or tear on your gasket material. Install your new air filter and then replace your cover and tighten up your bolts. And to get your proper torque, you can reference on this air filter housing on the outside your proper configurations. When you get done changing your air filter, you will simply Reset your air restrictor gauge by pressing on the top of it. And that concludes the air filter changing on the Kenworth T880 and the Peterbilt 567. Thank you, Jason, for demonstrating how to service the air filter on the Class 8 tractors. Always reference your OEM service literature, but routinely you want to inspect these clamps to make sure they're tight. You want to inspect this piping for evidence that something has rubbed or that it has been damaged. You want to inspect these clamps and this boot, this tubing, and there's another pair of clamps and a rubber boot at the turbocharger intake as well to be inspected on a routine basis. You want to check these clamps for proper torque. Again, reference your OEM service literature for the proper torque specs. Additionally, on the turbocharger discharge side, you want to inspect these constant torque clamps as well. Make sure they're tight, inspect the hoses, inspect the mandrel bent tubing for evidence of damage, inspect this hose, inspect the intake to the charge air cooler for evidence of damage, cracks, corrosion, etc. And now we'll go over to the driver's side and look at the inspection points there. On the driver's side of the engine compartment, you want to continue your air handling system inspection Look at your charge air cooler outlet. Look for obvious signs of damage, cracks, etc. You want to inspect and check the torque of these constant torque clamps. Inspect the rubber boot, the mandrel bent hose, the rubber boot, and these two constant torque clamps as well on a routine basis. Since this vehicle has twin external air filter housings, you've got a T-pipe located on the firewall beneath the hood and there's an additional clamp to be inspected here as well. Thanks for watching. We hope you learned a little bit about the air handling system from Cummins. Make sure you subscribe to our news feed to get all the latest tips and tricks from Miller Industries. This video is for product demonstration purposes only and is not intended for training or instructional purposes. Situations vary and operators should rely on their own professional knowledge and safety procedures when conducting actual recoveries. Miller Industries, the world leader in towing and recovery equipment.